Hello, I'm Andrew Wrigley, and this is our fifth segment in the series, How to Make a Shoe by Hand. This segment will cover the making of the lining and sewing it in with the top bead. So let's begin. All right, we've closed the upper, and now we're ready to uh, do the lining and the top beading. The top beading uh, finishes off the top edge and it will be made out of uh, the same calfskin, folded over and skived and tanned, and will cut kerfs in it so it will bend. And uh, it'll also reinforce the top and make it stronger so that it uh, won't uh, stretch. It'll be quite strong. Um, if you don't use um, homemade top beading, and if you use commercially prepared kangaroo top beading, um, that's a very good product, but you need to uh, add this um, grow gain uh, tape. It's like a uh, seam making tape that you can buy at fabric stores and it's very strong and it will prevent the leather from stretching so you have to uh, you have to put that inside the shoe to add strength to it but we're not going to do that because we're folding over our um, calf skin so we'll have the four layers of leather the um, the beading folded over the uh, the upper and the lining, so it'll be uh, strong enough. So I've cut out um, some strips that are um, almost an inch and a half wide. Um, they're um, in millimeters. They're thirty millimeters wide, and um, let's uh, skive them. Next, to uh, dye the leather. And when you're measuring the leather out, be sure to give yourself an extra two inches so that you don't come up short when you measure the, um, the opening of the upper. All right, so apply glue to it. Have a uh, paper towel nearby to uh, clean up and um, fold it over but allow um, a little bit to show. This will be the side that goes where the brogue holes are and then the shorter side will go on the inside. And um, use the hammer to uh, press it into place and then to give it a good crease. And. Uh, all right, well, here is the glued top beading, and now we're gonna cut kerfs in it so that it can uh, bend. Um, a lot of shoes don't have a top bead, uh, but it's a sign of quality and durability in a shoe, and it looks nice. So uh, finer shoes should have a top bead, and you should take the time to make one for your shoes. Uh, that makes, uh, definitely, if you're trying to make a dress shoe that's formal, uh, it should be there. Um, all right. On to the next step. All right, you um, have to cut these kerfs in it so that it will uh, be able to bend. So this will go on the facings where the laces go and where the lace holes are and then it bends. And then you can cut these so that it will bend on the opening around the ankle and then back to the other side can bend down over the facings again and uh, you know you uh, make little marks to help you see where where uh, it will coincide with that part of the upper so it, it goes inside the um, inside the shoe like this giving a very smart appearance And uh, I will glue this in place with the uh, white glue again 
you know, on the ins inside here, right there. And uh, this uh, beading will also uh, go behind the brogue holes. All right, I'll finish that and show you the next step. Also, uh, sky the um, the ends so that uh, they'll make a nice flush appearance and not create any lumps. Well, um, now I've um, finished putting the uh, top bead in. And um, as you can see, this is what it looks like on the inside. And uh, the next step will be making a lining and then sewing the lining along the, uh, the edge there. Here is a um, pair of Balmoral uppers that I'm working on right now. Um, it's a, uh, an Oxford style shoe. And uh, this design is characterized by the uh, what's called the Balmoral line, right here, that uh, goes all the way around the shoe. And uh, the Balmoral was named after Queen Victoria's estate in Scotland, and the first pair of Balmorals were made for Prince Albert as a uh, pair of boots that would uh, keep the water out when walking on wet ground. and the pattern making was um, made with this in mind to uh, have this high seam to uh, protect the uh, foot from moisture. But it became a fashion and caught on and now when people use the term Balmoral it sometimes is just simply meant uh, for a, an Oxford style shoe but it's a little bit more specific than Oxford. Alright well on to the next step with uh, doing the um, doing the lining so uh, and here's the inside of my uh, Balmoral upper. All right well uh, here is the uh, lining it's all glued up and ready to be punched and then stitched um, it basically is going to go um, inside our upper and then be uh, uh, sewn at the uh, the top where the uh, beading is and um, this is what the pattern looks like here's the uh, counter you know it fits around like that fits around like this Here's the vamp, goes on like that, and the toe right there. Basically this is the easiest pattern to make. Um, you uh, just have to make everything so that it will, uh, you know, be in excess of what you need. So there's the... Um, upper on top of the lining. I will glue this in and then punch holes through the upper and through the lining and then sew it in and cut off the excess with a razor making it very neat and clean. And then we will be ready to uh, last the shoe and make the uh, carve the feather of the insole. So I'll do that and uh, show you the next step. Well, um, it's all been punched out now. All the um, holes uh, are ready uh, for doing the stitching. So, see, well, you can't really see that, but anyway, the holes have been punched through the upper, and um, always use leather to back up the uh, whatever you're punching. And I make little um, sticks that I can um, set the leather on top of and the shoe on, almost like an anvil. 
and then uh, I can use it to reach the hard to get places um, because sometimes you can't just flatten the upper down you know that would ruin it so you can make uh, like a little wooden anvil to uh, prop under the upper to help give you the angle that you need. All right, now I'm going to um, stitch this and then uh, we'll go to the next step, which will be stitching and cutting off the excess. So you uh, have traced out your tongues and um, you make the lining wider than the, uh, the tongue so that after you glue it down you can cut it precisely. And uh, we're using uh, barge cement to glue it on and then uh, we're pushing them against the last to get the right shape uh, so that it glues with a curve. And uh, then I will punch out and stitch this. So uh, there you have it, there are the tongues. All right, well, um, here's the upper. I glued the um, tongue in place, and next will come stitching it. I will conceal the stitches uh, in this area right here um, on the facing so that you uh, they blend in with the stitches that are already there, and then that will give it some uh, mechanical strength as well as the uh, cement. So um, we're almost done. So I'll do that and then uh, show you the result. All right, well, the upper is now finished. Um, here's an inside look of what I did. I uh, put two um, stitches there. And uh, as you can see, I just uh, put them in the same holes that uh, are visible on the facings for a nice, neat appearance. So the tongue has been glued with leather cement and more importantly it's been mechanically fastened with thread so the tongue uh, will not move out of place now. So um, I'd like to point out that uh, a lot of shoemaking courses don't teach you how to make an upper. They provide pre-made uppers to you entirely skipping over this very important step which I think is a wrong thing to do. So they only teach lasting and finishing of the uh, sole. So um, here we have uh, a good deal of work here, and um, we will. I'll take you to the next step. I, it might look a little bit darker now, and that's because I touched it up in places with a little more dye uh, to suit my taste, and uh, I also um, hit the top bead with some more dye. So. Um, all right, well, the next step will be um, constructing, uh, showing you how to construct an insole and carve a feather, and I'll be um, wetting this and putting it on the last to try to uh, get it into shape for when we do the lasting demonstration. So um, this has been Andrew Wrigley. Uh, I hope this has been some help to you, and keep clicking and skiving. I forgot to mention uh, that you should punch out the holes on the facings uh, before you put the tongue in. That will make it easier for you. All right.